in this session we would like to discuss very interesting concept in programming that's what we call it as recursion as you know now you know how to write a function so when you write a program small set of actions we can organize as a function we can see various we can implement various types of functions so we learn in our main method or the main function we call those functions so then the program executions jumps to that particular function and executes that so within that function if necessary we can call another function so how about calling the same function for example here we have a main function so program execution starts here when in the body of that main function we call the recursive function for recurs so then executions jump to this function so then it executes that functions in the body of this recurs functions you know that we can call any other function so i am asking what happens when you call the same function so in the programming that's possible so if we do so what happens so this function calls again the same so that it executes back and when it comes there and call it back again and again so that call it has recurs so obviously if you implement that there should be some condition stop this recursive calls recursion continues until we it met that stop condition so as you may understood in the programming it is legal to call the same function in the body of the function obviously you know we can call any other function in the body of the function similarly we can call the same function in the body of that function so let's take an example to understand this concept so for example there is a function called countdown it won't return anything so that is why and it take one input parameter the integer n so when the execution starts it print this parameter n on the terminal so it print n so then you see after that we have a condition n greater than 1 if that satisfied it call count down same function with n minus 1 and if that condition did not satisfy it prints blast keyword called blast on the terminal So let's try to understand how it works. So for example, when you call that particular function with countdown 3, so when it comes in the first execution, it prints 3. Then it calls back. And then it prints 2. Then it calls back. Then it prints 1. It calls back again it print zero so then that condition given that condition here given here it's not satisfied it prints the last on the term i'll explain that so when the countdown function start begins with n equal 3 
and print 3 on the terminal. Since it is greater than 1, it calls itself. So execution starts from the beginning with n equal 2 and print 2 on the terminal. So since 2 is greater than 1, it calls itself. Execution again begins with 1 and print 1 on the terminal. So if that is equal to 1, it print last and return. So that's how it works. So you see, any function can call itself. And there should be a condition where stop calling it again and again. Until it satisfies that condition, it will call the same function. That is, call it as recursive function. Function that calls itself is a recursive function. This process is called as a recursion. So as you may understood now, it's like a snake follows its own tail. So it's called a dynamic. So when you call the recursion, when you call the same function as a last statement, we call it as tail recursion. And there are different types of recursions. And different books categorize them different way. In principle, we can see two types of recursions. We call them as direct recursion and indirect recursion. Direct recursion, call the recursive function directly. That means it calls itself directly. Indirect recursion, call some other function, that function will call the same. So for example, function A will call function B, and function B will call back function A indirectly. That's kind of recursion called as indirect recursion. Direct recursion, if you have function A, it calls the function A again and again. So there are two major types, direct and indirect. In the direct recursion, we can further categorize into two. We call them as linear recursion and multiple recursions. In linear recursions, we call the same function only once. So if there is a function called A, we call it A within the body only once. In the multiple recursions, in the function body, we can call the same function more than once as well. Maybe two, maybe three times. Well, it has multiple recursions. So in the linear recursion, that means it calls the same function only once. We can further categorize it into two. We call them as tail recursion and non-tail recursion. The example we notice is the tail recursion because the recursive call is the last call on this function. In the non-tail recursion, the recursive call maybe not the last call. If the recursive call is the first call in the function, we call them as head recursion. Not as the first, maybe we can have this recursive call at the middle as well. So because of that, I would like to categorize the recursion into two, the tail recursion and non-tail recursion. The tail recursion, we call the same function as the last call, non-tail recursion, we call the same function anywhere else in the function body. Similarly, we can see multiple recursions. So I will show you some examples. So in the multiple recursions, we call the same function more than once. So if we call the same function twice, we call it as binary recursive functions, binary recursions. 
if you recall, it has more than twice as the next three questions. As I mentioned, most common types of recursive functions are linear recursive functions. Linear recursive functions are commonly seen in programming world. So among these, tail recursions are very popular. The tail recursion calls the same function as the last call. In addition to that, non-tail recursive functions also seen or we can implement some problems or we can solve some problems as non-tail recursion using non-tail recursion. Let's start our study further with tail recursive functions. In the tail recursion, basically we call the function as the last call. Because of that, the function stacks we could be reused. You will learn those later on. In generally, it basically calls the same function more than once as the last call in the body. So we can get many examples or we can solve many, 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 we can solve many problems using this tail recursion. In order to understand a few of them, let's take a problem of GCD. GCD refers to greatest common divisor. Greatest common divisor of given two numbers. If you give two numbers, to find it out the largest factor common to these both numbers. We, if you want to get the largest number, largest common factor of two given numbers, there is algorithm available, or it has Euclidean algorithm. Euclidean algorithm simplifies the calculation of greatest common device or the GCD in short. In Euclidean algorithm says, if the GCD of A and B is equal to GCD of B and R, R is A modular B. That means if you mod A with B, reminder is R. Euclidean has proved that greatest common divisor of A and B is equal to greatest common divisor of B and R, A mod B, that means R is A modular B. So as you see, that is recursive. So this is the problem we want to solve. That can be solved by solving this. So this can be solved. This can be further simplified and so on. So there is a base condition. So the base condition of GCD is GCD A and zero is A. And this Euclidean algorithm works in case A greater than B. If A smaller than B, we can call GCD A B with GCD B A. So how can we transform this into simple recursion. It is straightforward and simple. So, we're going to implement a function called GCD. It takes two integers as their input parameter. And we check whether it's smaller than y. So then we cannot apply greatest common divisor function. Because if, uh, we cannot apply Euclidean function. Euclidean function works in case GCD x larger than y. So we, in case x smaller than y, then what happens? We call the same function with y and x. So instead of x and y, we call gcd y x. We call the same function. We say this is equal to that. In other, other if y equals zero, then in the second condition, If y is not equal to zero, y not equal to zero, we call 
e c d y and x mod y. So if the Euclidean proves that greatest common divisor is of x and y is equal, y is smaller number into x modular y. We call g c d x and y. And else it returns zero. So actually this one we can check first. So I made one mistake. We can say if y equal zero, then it return x else it return g c d y x mod y. So, so it then becomes the tail regression. So in this my implementation, this is not the last call, last call is this, but actually we can write this as the last call. So basically we write this CD is as the tail regression. All right. So for example, for non-tail recursive function, I, I can ask you to implement a function which is called print n by giving two parameters n and m, we assume m greater than n, uh, sorry, a, m is large number, n is small number. So when you call print n, m, let's assume it print the numbers from m to n. How that can happen? So you see here, I first I check whether n is less than m, then what I do, I call the same function with n plus one and then n. As I print the value of n on the term. So what's happened, let's say I call this with number three and five. So three less than five is true. Because of that, it calls the same function with three plus one, that is four and five. So it goes up and come back. Four less than five is true. Because of that, it calls itself with four plus one, that is five and five. So it comes up and check whether five less than five, that is false. So it stops recalling the same function. And then it prints the value n. In that call, value of n is five, it prints five and terminates its last call. So in the, it comes back and then terminates its previous call and print four, and it come back and terminate this previous call and print three. So you see, this is head recursion because this recursive call is the first call, not the last call of the function. And generally we call it as not non tail recursive function. The very popular and the best example of non tail recursive function is the factorial function. In the factorial function, we want to calculate the factorial n. Factorial n is the multiplication of the numbers starting from one to n. So for example, factorial four is 24. Factorial six is 720. Factorial four means one multiplied, two multiplied, three multiplied, four. Factorial six means one multiply, two multiply, three multiply, four multiply, five multiply, six. So can we write a recursive function to do this calculation? Yes, we can. So what we want to do is do this calculation. So here are our recursive function. We have a function which return a long integer, or maybe it can be integer as well. If it is a large value, it should be long. The name of the function is factorial. We take one input parameter that is n. We check whether n greater than one. If so, it returns n multiplied factorial n minus one. 
if it is equal to zero, somehow it returns one. So that is our recursive function. So in order to understand how that goes, let's have a look, some example. Let's say we call this factorial function with parameter four, that is factorial four. So it's a, in the first call of that, if n equal four, because of that, it re recall the same function with n equal three. So again, it not satisfy the condition. So it recall this function with n equal two. Then it recall it with n equal one, and it recalls it n equal zero. So if that n equal zero, so condition is not satisfied. So for example, here condition this condition is not satisfied. So because of that, it returns one. So you see, in the last call it returns one. So when it returns one, then what happened? It returns one here. What happened? This whatever this return value will multiply with the n. This n is the previous call. So for example, here it returns once in the last call where n equals zero. And after it returns one, that one will multiply by the end of the previous call. In that previous call, n is one. So then it multiply one, multiply one, and returns it. So it returns once to the previous call. So in that previous call, n is two, then it multiply two in with one, that is two, it goes to the previous. So in the previous, it's three. So then it multiply three with two. Answer is six, it goes to the first call. First call, it will multiply, first call n is four. Then four multiply with six. And finally it returns the answer to the caller, that is 24. That's how recursion works. In order to understand what's happened, let's say we call in a different way. So let's say we call factorial function with six. So then what's happened? In the first call, we call the same factorial function with five. And then it's called with the four. And then three, two, one. After that, it returns one. Then one multiply two, it returns two. Then two multiply three, it returns six. Six multiply four, it returns 24. 24 multiply five, it returns 120. 120 multiply six, it returns 720. So that's how these factorial functions work. So if you understand that, you should be able to write a function that raise an integer by a given positive exponent b. So for example, let's say this recursive function is power. When you call that recursive function power with two and four, you should calculate two to the power four, value two to the power four, that 16. How can you write a recursive function to solve this? So you see, we can write simple force to solve this. So the function name is power. It takes the base in phase and the power raise. How many times we should multiply the base? This power raise. It's two to the power four example, base is two, power raise is four. So then we check whether the power raise is not equal to zero. If so, what we return is base multiply the same function with power is minus one. In other words, it, what it says, two to the power four is equal, two to the power two multiply base, two multiply two to the power three. So then we say two to the power three equal, two multiply two to the power one. Then it says two to the power one equal, 
two multiply two to the power zero. So if the power phase is zero, so this may not call it again, instead it call one. Two to the power zero is one. So when then one returns, it multiply two, then multiply two the return values and so on. Finally we get the correct answer. Right. So far we discuss direct recursions under that. We discuss linear recursions. In the linear recursions, we have a look on tail recursion and non-tail recursions. Example for tail recursion is GCD, non-tail recursion is factorial. So now let's have a look on multiple recursive functions. A function with more than one recursive form referred to as multiple recursive functions. If we call the same twice, it's called as binary recursive function. So make the example for binary recursive Fibonacci function. Fibonacci function defines in maths mathematical maths mathematics as follows. In the Fibonacci zero, Fibonacci zero is zero, Fibonacci one is one, Fibonacci n, any other number of Fibonacci is addition of two previous. Fibonacci n is Fibonacci n minus one plus Fibonacci n minus two. That's how we define Fibonacci mathematical function. So in principle, it, what it says in this series, so any number, any, any, any value in this series is so addition of two previous. So for example, Fibonacci zero according to this definition is zero. Fibonacci one according to this definition is one. Any other thing is addition of previous two. So that means Fibonacci, this is zero, this is one. Fibonacci one is basically, this is zero, this is one, Fibonacci two is addition of previous two, that means addition of zero and one is one, that one is the next one. The next one is addition of previous two, one and one, two. The next one is addition of one, two is three, then two, three is five, three, five is eight, five, eight is 30, eight, 13 is 21, 21, 13, 34. So the next one is 21, 34. So that's how Fibonacci sequence defines. If you want to get a number in this Fibonacci sequence, we can very nicely write multiple recursive function. Actually, it's a binary recursive function. So this can directly transform into a recursive, C recursive function as here. So as you see, it's straightforward. So this is Fibonacci function, which take a parameter n. If that parameter is zero, the answer is zero, first one is zero in the series. If that n is one, the answer is one, second one in the series is one. A any other area, any other number else, so answer is the pre-addition of previous two. That means answer is n minus one at two, n minus one, five minus n minus one plus five minus n minus two. So that's the straightforward code. So when you execute that, you can get any elements in that series. So I'll show you the, how it works in a separate video. Later on. So if you implement such Fibonacci function and call it as Fibonacci file, then what happens? So inside of the body of this Fibonacci file, that function will call twice. So that is Fibonacci n minus one plus n minus three, four and three. Then when it called four, it further divide into two, three and two, and then it comes three, it further divide into two and one. Then it try to solve 
2, that is 1 and 0. So if we call that, the answer of 1 and 0 we know is that is, according to the definition, answer is 0 is 0, 1 is 1. So then, this is 1, this is 0. Then 1 plus 0 is 1, it returns 1 here. Then it add 1 to this fabulous 2, that is, whatever, 2 answer will add to the fabulous 1, and then get that, add to this, and add to that. Similarly, it go through this branch, and this branch, and this branch, so on. So it's from the bottom, which calculates towards the top. So that's how this high minus exclusion works. Right. Now let's, to, let's try to understand or to see a nice example of indirect recursion. In the indirect degree recursion, we are calling the same function directly. So in the indirect recursion, we are mutually called it. So for example, function A cos B, then perhaps B cos C, then C cos back A, like that. So in order to understand this mutual recursive functions or the mutual recursion, or we, in general, we call it as indirect recursion, let's try to implement a is even function, or a well-known is even function in the recursive form. Can you write a C1 and it's odd functions which check whether the given number is even or odd using the recursion? How can you implement that? If you don't understand that, how to implement it, so you should understand the conditions. So you know zero is even, so any other function not even is odd. If any number, if any given n is even, we know n minus one is odd. So using that knowledge, we can write mutually recursive functions to solve this problem. So for example, here, how I do is zero. This even function take the integer n and see whether that given n is even. So we know if n is zero, it is even, so re we return one. In the C1, returning a positive value taken as true. In any other cases, I call this odd function with n minus one, because if n is even, n minus one is odd, I know. So then I check whether it's n minus one is odd or not. So for that I call is odd function with value n minus one. So then we need to have a function called is odd. So this is the definition of my is odd function. In the is odd functions, I take an integer n, and how do I define the odd is? Anything is not even is the odd. So I say, I call is even function previous one with n and get an not opposite of it. So then this is the odd. So is in other words it says it is not even, then it is odd. So that is my definition is is of is odd. So this is is even. So after we implement these two, we can find it out whether this given number is an even number. It's very simple example of indirect recursion. There we have only two functions A and B. A called B, B called A. Right. When we do recursion, we need to care, we need to be very careful because sometimes we may end up with infinite recursion. If you do infinite recursions, 
our programs may crash and terminate. So this infinite recursion happens if the given base condition is not met at any time. So for example, here there is a function for a ray. Inside that we print the value we given, that is x, and we call the same function with x plus one. So when you call with three, call with four, five, six, and so on. And there are no termination or there are no base conditions because of that the same function will call infinite number of times and if the memory is not enough to call it anymore program is can crash the segmentation point that means crash saying no space so because of that when you solve the problems with a recursion we need to be very we need to be very careful not to get it into such infinite recursion issue. So as you may understood so far in this lecture, this recursion is very interesting concepts where exists in programming. So by recursion we can write very elegant and clear programs. In other words, we can solve the problems in straightforward and elegant way. So, so algorithms for some problems, we can convert those problems into recursive algorithms and solve it in nice way. Unfortunately, when you implement recursive function, it might take memory and resources other than the regular type of implementation. So any, most of the recursive functions, if you want, we can code it using loops. Because loops also do the, call the same things again and again. So we can, if you implement it with loops, so we usually, the, it is faster than the recursive implementation. However, so most of the professional programmers, they prefer to do, or they prefer to use recursion, recursive function, because that shows very short, clean, elegant code. So if you do concern on efficiency, then you might think about not to use recursion, but in all other situations. So finding a recursive answer to a given problem is much more easier than solving it using loops. So I hope you understand that how recursion works. So I have, I, I would like to see you solve two problems towards the end. So the first problem, I want to print this number triangle as a recursive, or and by using a recursive function. So for example, you first of all, you have to write a recursive function called pattern n. So when it's pattern n call with four, it should print a number triangle four. If it is calls with five, it should print number triangle five. So obviously you can do it with loops, but I want to do it with recursive calls without having any loops. Try to implement this without having any loops. Similarly, I discussed the Fabinosi sequence Fabinosi series. So I want to see, I want you to see, I would like to see you implement a recursive function called Fabinosi sequence, which take n as an input. So it should print the sequence of those Fabinosi numbers. Start from zero, one, one, two, three, and so on. If Fabinosi 10 given, 
like that. This is 10, no? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So Fibonacci 10 is, is given. So I should print Fibonacci 0 to 10, all numbers in this sequence up to 10. 10, 10, Fibonacci 10. Obviously, you can do it using loops again. So what I'm asking you to implement it using recursion without using loops. That's it for this session. So I do a separate video to demonstrate the application which we discussed in this session.